silver medalist one year ago fired his coach just 10 days before the European Championships. And Brian had the most difficult place to skate in qualifying. He started the day at 10 a.m. and it's very difficult because there's very little energy and if any energy in the building and it's hard for these skaters to find the adrenaline to put out what they need to put out. He had an aggressive program scheduled. And he flips off the opening quad jump. Along the course of the program, he did get him some nice content, good solid triple axle. But clearly it was a really tough place to skate. Another fall for Joubert, who would finish third in qualifying. Takeshi Honda, two-time world bronze medalist, but injuring his left ankle here in practice. He's been plagued with ankle injuries lately in his career, cost him to miss last year's world championships, and this was his first jump. And it was the left ankle that he hurt just yesterday in practice. And down he went, writhing in pain. Honda would have to leave the world championships with a sprained ankle taken away in a wheelchair. His ankle is now in a cast. He's resting at the hotel and out of the competition. Stefan Lambiel was fourth one year ago in Dortmund. The young Swiss skater coming here with designs on the podium. Well, he's had such a difficult year. He has, in essence, missed the entire year of competition due to injury. And yet today, he was by far the highlight skate of the day. Not only did he miss his, his entire season, but he also got rid of the long program he was skating in developed a brand new long program just one month ago. There's the first quad triple that he did. And here is the second quad. And it was a clean sca skate. And with Lambiel. that, Lambiel first in qualifying, a huge result. Canadian champion Jeff Buttle had a strong season on the podium in every event he entered. Jeff had made the decision prior to this performance that he would not include a quad attempt here at the World Championships. And we knew something was a little off early in this program. This is opening triple flip, triple toe combination, but he turned it into a triple double. And that's unusual for him to do that because that combination triple triple is normally money in the bank for him. He did get in one triple axle, slight turn after it before the following triple toe loop. But later in the program, he was to attempt it again, not so successfully this time. Sudbury's Jeffrey Buttle in seventh place after qualifying. It was a little rough, um, but I mean, it was a decent start. So I think uh, really it's just about, you know, making it better from here and improving. So uh, considering how he skated in the qualifying at Nationals is an improvement. So uh, really it's just about taking the time to get used to the ice from now until the short and uh, definitely skating better than that. <laughs> this is the teenage sensation from the United States, Evan Lysacek, a three-time junior world silver medalist in his world championship debut. And Evan is just freshly out of the junior Grand Prix circuit. This is his first year as a senior and he certainly found his place. But with this performance here today he vaults himself into the final group of skaters for the short program and that's very reminiscent of his teammate Johnny Weir who came to Dortmund last year as a rookie and did the very same thing. For Evan it wasn't a totally clean skate but I think overall he has a real presence about him and there was a, a performance quality that really helped him in this performance. Lysacek winning the Four Continents Championship in South Korea just four weeks before these World Championships, and you can see his confidence. And that 
win definitely did give him confidence coming into this event. Evan Lysacek would finish sixth and make the final flight for the short program. The three-time and defending world champion, Evgeny Poshenko, unbeaten this year, but challenged by himself and an injury that kept him off the ice for the last two weeks. And, and he's been waiting for this moment for so long, to the world championships in his home country, and for him to be held back by an injury has to be so frustrating. It is reportedly his groin, and he's been very cautious in training just the last couple of days. This yeah. was to be his opening quad jump. He turned it into a triple lutz, triple toe, double loop, and that tells you right there how he's feeling. There's no attack. He's, he's just skating so cautiously. Reminds me of how Elvis had to skate when he had his groin injury. Shanko's coach, Alexei Mission, saying that this groin injury is so serious, they're not sure he'll even skate the short program here in Moscow. He finished second in qualifying. This is young Stefan Lindemann, the surprise and fan favorite bronze medalist one year ago on his home ice in Dortmund, Germany. Well, this young man seems to save his best performances of the season for these world championships because he's been really quite lackluster on the Grand Prix circuit this year, did not even qualify for the Grand Prix final, and yet here today he delivers one of the top performances on the day. Look at this quad combination. That had to be the best of the day. And he's been trying to overcome a back injury. Seems to be the theme of this championship so, so far. gets in another triple axe, a little struggle on the landing. And Lindemann is fourth after qualifying. Here's Johnny Weir of the United States, the two-time U.S. champion. But he didn't look right coming into this qualifying competition. And we're beginning to sound like a broken record here today, but he was another competitor suffering from an injury. We received word that he had to have his foot injected to numb the pain and it was clear during this performance that he wasn't quite on as well good combination there but throughout it he seemed cautious he didn't have much drive or attack that we were accustomed to seeing from him he got his big tricks in for johnny he doesn't have a quad but then later in the program that was when he started to fade Triple loop was usually a very consistent jump for him. He turned that into a double. So not vintage Johnny Weir. Nevertheless, he's fifth after qualifying and in that final flight. Canada's Emmanuel Sandu, three-time Canadian champ, silver medalist this year. And the door was wide open for Emmanuel because he was one of the very final skaters of the day. And it really was not a well-skated event up until this point. And as always, we sat with much anticipation as he began this program, going into his opening jump, which was to have been a quad toe, he turned that into this double, and then we all wondered, will he let the rest of the program slip away once again? He did fight back. Got in his, both his triple axles, one in combination with a triple toe. But then he seemed to fade again at the end and lose his focus a little bit. It was a performance reminiscent of so many that we saw during the men's qualifying. It certainly was not an environment where if you were looking to come to see great performances, it was not to be had in the men's qualifying today. Emmanuel Sandu would finish in 16th place in qualifying, 
but nine skaters between 7th and 16th are within three points of each other. Oh, no, I'm not that happy, but, uh, you know, it's qualifying, so I'm kind of glad to get that out of the way. My warm-up was terrible, um, so made it a little bit more difficult, but um, I got the axles in, and uh, we opted not to do the quartile. That was planned even before the, uh, the warm-up, and um, so now just getting the, the quads in will be sort of like the key, so... So here are the standings in the men's competition after qualifying. Lambiel of Switzerland, the surprise leader. Lachenko gutting it out for second. Joubert in third. The top Canadian is Jeff Buttle in seventh place. And Canada's Emmanuel Sandu is currently in 16th place. But remember, qualifying represents 14% of the overall score.